<laughs> I'm down here doing a little, <laughs> a little trinket for one of my uh, music friends from long ago who has a music store. I'll uh, send that along once I <coughs> edit it. Uh, I'll explain it later, but uh, <coughs> it was just a joke kind of thing. I told him I'd do it because I was going to be down this way. So uh, I just uh, just went over and shot some clips. I don't have any idea what I'm going to do with it yet. But I got to do it like well, <laughs> before uh, Friday or sometime early or late tonight. Anyway, I'm up here right where I used to live at 200 West Franklin. My, my carriage house which we're approaching which happens to be right up the street from that music store metro sound music i met him uh first through uh big city when i used to follow them at drunk tank <laughs> uh, back in the early 90s he uh filled in for somebody temporarily and then sort of took over when uh, they couldn't find any replacement and played with him a while and he uh he started that music store uh like um about that time and i didn't know anything about it until we got to talk one time in the bar and we sort of chit chat back and forth every now and then and uh, it's kind of funny i just realized it's been almost 30 years over 30 years since that uh since I uh, first met him, and uh, he's pretty decent. Just a business guy, but, you know, sort of got a creative bent, too. And uh, he's pretty good with music. He's into keyboards, mostly. But anyway, just to give you a little backstory. Anyway, here we are, uh, I'm right on the side street. I remember so many times here at the carriage house I used to live, and I know I sent you pictures, but uh, this is kind of video, and being that thing, is Thanksgiving uh, tomorrow here in Richmond and all over the country. Uh, I just wanted to shoot this because I remember many times you see over there on top in the back, that was my apartment. I spent many other lonely times there during the holidays. Uh, I didn't mind it really. I always went up to my mother's or something. Uh, we had Thanksgiving, but I always come back there and spend most of my time. But anyway, just to give you a little live shot, I mean, the pictures do it justice, but it's more justice action, see it in action. So I'm just shooting a short clip for you just to give you a little idea, give you sort of a feel for what it was like in the evening too, because uh, it's almost, uh, I guess it's close to five. And, um, you know, it's been many evenings here too, in the winter time for the BC unit. So. That's the main house you're looking at. And of course, that's the Jefferson Hotel, which they're renova renovating again. <laughs> Back when I lived here, almost, I guess, I lived here between 91 and 95, so they had just finished redoing this right about 91, I think, or 90, right before I got here. Now they're redoing it again. Beautiful hotel. They do maintain that very well. They're just going over it again. So anyway, this is a little street, a little area. And that place over there has always been there. That's kind of a ratty kind of home for, and when I was there, it was a home for kind of wacky old man. Now they got all kinds of people in there. They just had a murder in there just a few weeks ago. Some, one of the wacky people, who was young, they got young people in there young and he uh, stabbed this other woman. I don't know what it was all about, but uh, it was the first murder they had there. It's always a first around here. And uh, when you see that guy walking out, <laughs> that's always that been that mysterious office. And I never did ever understand what went on there, but they had apartments up top, which I heard were pretty nice. Uh, I don't ever, I never figured out what they actually do back there. But the guy, that, at least when I was living here years ago, uh, he was always there late into the night. So I don't know what the hell he was doing. I don't think it was anything nefarious, but whatever it was, it was time consuming. So I thought you'd like that little tidbit about this area. But 
about, that's the thing about living down here. You always had a little bit of color, a little bit of mystique. You know, in my neighborhood where I live, you know, it's pretty cut and dry. It's a ghetto. <laughs> you know every trick and every game in the book down there. <laughs> here, you always got these little mysterious things. And right down there, that gray building in the distance, that's now the police station, headquarters, actually. When I lived here, and for many years afterwards, that was just an empty building. It just stood there empty, never used. And uh, it used to be State Farm uh, Insurance. They used to have their, uh, I guess it was their headquarters, uh, right there. Now it's police station. They've had all kinds of <laughs> activities that they don't like around there because of all this political shit, you know, the social stuff going on these days. They uh, burn up a, a setup. Uh, I think it was a dump truck on fire right on the street in front of the police station. Uh, so many things were going on because of the stuff I forgot what that one was about. But it was something, something related, put it that way. And it was something racially motivated, put it that way. Anyway, this is a nice little building. I really like this building. I would have liked to have an apartment here if I could have got it. But I never even knew who uh, rented it or what it cost or what. But they were a little bit bigger than the carriage house. And uh, they probably got the same color that that had at the time. They kind of ruined that by uh, making it gentrified and whatnot when they redid it. But uh, this is the mysterious office downstairs. I guess there's two of them here. And I had, like I said, I have no fucking idea what they do here. Uh, like I said, the guys always in the late at night. I used to live right in, you know, I'd look out the alley and I'd see the light on in the back. And I'm like, I wonder what the fuck that guy does. <laughs> so I'll never know. Um, my sister said uh, she knew somebody to live with in the apartment. And they didn't know what he did either. So I don't know what the story was. Really this is a little neighborhood. It's a little clean, cleaner than it was when I was here, but still a little ratty and rough around the edges. But, uh, I don't know, a peaceful time to be here too, because there's not many people around. Usually when I run by here, it's kind of busy or something, because I come during the daytime. Uh, on the weekends, it's pretty quiet. But, um, today, it's almost kind of deserted. Even the police station is quiet which is unusual, especially in a city of Richmond. Uh, uh, anyway, just a little snippet for you. Um, now I'll uh, walk up a little and uh, give you a little few more snippets. Uh, this is the alley, by the way. Uh, notorious alley. All kinds of things have <laughs> emanated from this alley, including uh, people uh, committing uh, unmentionable acts in that little courtyard in front of my carriage house when I lived here. Actually, I never had anything happen right when I was here, but my sister, who used to live here, <laughs> had some stories about some unmentionable things. And uh, I guess you can guess what I'm talking about. So it was always something going on some kind of color of some sort, some not so, uh, <laughs> not so uh, <laughs> grand, if you will. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I hope you like this little snippet. Uh, I love to tell these stories. <laughs> you know, I could make a living doing these little documentary kind of journalistic things. But I just never really sat down and planned anything. <laughs> Uh, definite or organized in uh, you know, in a form that, you know, would be, you know, easily marketable or whatever. <laughs> so feel good, Rose. You have kind of inspired me in that way uh, because, uh, you know, you, uh, I've done these things for years in the past. And, uh, in the course of doing all that, I kind of, kind of got to liking doing this stuff. Sort of getting a little feel for what, how to do it, and what to do. So, anyway, we're on the street corner now, and back to VCU, back to my truck at Starbucks, uh, and back home. 
and uh, I, I got pork chops for dinner. I hope they're unthawed. It's been so nippy, I put them out last night in the oven so nothing would get it. You know, roaming around the kitchen like that, that damn possum. <laughs> uh, but they weren't unthawed in the morning, and I waited till 11, they weren't unthawed. So I left them in there, so hopefully by now they are. But it's been kind of cold. Yeah, that's just the way it is. I wish I had remembered to put them out the day before, but I, this damn social media stuff I've been doing, you know, it's just been distracting. And I've been thinking about a lot of shit in between. So between the two of them, they sort of keep me distracted and busy and inspiring other deep thoughts and reflections. So I need to sit down and just sort of organize my time better and uh, organize my thoughts better and actually write about some of this stuff in a more journalistic sort of short form that uh, would be interesting to read because uh, there's a lot of interesting observations that come to mind and I would like to try to write some of that stuff but the problem with writing is as you well know with me is it just you know I end up getting into it it's just that eats up a lot of time. And right now I got like three or five or six different things I want to do um, concerning making some money for a change instead of just flaking on. So um, I don't want to get too deep into anything that's not going to make some of it. And that's going to take a lot of time. So I don't know. And I need to get back to the music stuff because I've been neglecting that also because of my distractions. So I'm trying to work on that. And uh, I guess one last thing, uh, that girl I sent you the picture of at the Starbucks, uh, you didn't say anything, or at least I haven't looked at the phone yet. It's in my pocket. Uh, but um, I just said, fuck it, you know. After my uh, trouble, you know, buck dancing around, well, I when I like somebody or something, uh, or I think they like me and you know, I like them. I'm like, fuck, you know, I'm not gonna, I gotta do something different. And just, you know, if it don't work, if it fucks up, so what? Just do it. See what happens. <laughs> if something happens, you know, figure it out all, on the way, along the way, off the cuff. See, we, see where it goes. And she seems pretty nice. I kinda like her. She's nice. Kinda, She's pretty, but she's not like a princess princess. But she's pretty, she's nice, she's young. Uh, I don't know. She might be somebody like you, you know. That, uh, you can get kind of close to her and get to know her and have a little fun. Just have a sort of interaction. Uh, going back and forth, sharing inspiration and whatnot. So that's why I did what I did. I just, I basically, I sat for a minute and I saw it, I was waiting for, you know, a little time to be more, uh, you know, more uh, clear about things, but uh, <laughs> right as I decided I was going to do something, <laughs> a bunch of people walked in, so I didn't have time to really, you know, ask for anything too much, or, you know, she wouldn't have had time to say too much either, so what I did was I just, uh, I went ahead and painted her that uh, card, my business card that I use now, and told her, <laughs> check out my uh, links, which are on the business card to my creative stuff like Instagram, music, and all that stuff. And I just told her, uh, I, you know, I'm looking for some creative inspiration, which I kind of am in the sense, like I was just saying, having somebody to just, you know, give you a little little energy and a little motivation. You know, a perspective you might not have looked, uh, had yourself. So, you know, that always helps. And who knows, maybe, maybe we'll get to know each other enough where I can get her to do, to be a camera woman for me and do some creative girl sheets. She doesn't seem to mind that I like to be girl either because I'm always there in something girl. That's another reason I kind of say, well, what the fuck? You know, she can, if that doesn't bother me, she seems to like me like she does. She 
she gave me this kind of look when I was in there today and the last time, a day or two ago when I walked in, she seemed to pointedly say hi and it was busy so I never really got a chance to follow up on it. So that's why I did what I did. But, you know, like I said, might be some good company, good connection or something. So we'll see. Uh, I'm not expecting anything. You know, nothing happens. So be it. As long as it's neutral, <laughs> that's okay. You know, I don't want any bombs blowing up in my face. Your awkwardness. I don't get a sense that I would have that happen. You would have nothing happen. You know, so. I, I, you know, it doesn't bother me. So, the worst that can happen is. She'll just be no good when I say anything about it. You know, it doesn't bother me. You know, after that whole caveman thing, it's like, you know, <laughs> I'm done with dancing around and getting attached and being patient and just playing along, you know. But now it's like, fuck it, just get to the point. You know, get to the point. Don't let things get to a point where they're hanging in the wind. And, you know, things are not being communicated and all that shit. I mean, I don't, I'm, I don't have any hard feelings against that girl, you know, the Caitlin girl. But, you know, I just got a point where it's like, what the fuck do you want? You know, I'm being patient, I'm trying to, you know, it's obvious I like you, whatever. And she's just like, you know, holding me in the wind. And then I go up there, you know, and handle that little thing and I don't want to get in a whole story about why I did that but it was like she got it was like she got all mad for no reason and uh and then had that girl tell me but she told me and uh, she didn't ban me or nothing she's like an assistant manager but she didn't ban me but I was like you know I just ain't gonna go back I'm not gonna get dragged into some game and you know that's what would happen I know it's going to happen. You know, the fact that she didn't do that tells me she's leaving the door open, which tells me, you know, she don't know what she wants and, and likely be going back and forth. And, you know, more of the same, basically. So I said, I'm just going to stop going. Leave her alone. Give her what she wants. Yeah. Move on. But, you know, I like her. She wasn't terrible. We probably wouldn't have been compatible uh, for much. But, I mean, like I said, she was kind of sweet in a way. I don't know. I just liked her. But I don't want to get in that trap again because, you know, with her, it was like, you know, like that girl I told you about that I happened just to randomly meet and uh, during one of my walks down here in the van. I met her up there by the museum, you know. She was obviously sort of opening the door and sort of letting me know that she was, you know, a little interested and it was okay to show some interest myself. And I kinda, you know, I, it wasn't like I was scared to do it. That's what's so funny. I didn't do it because I didn't want to be like playing 10 women on the field. So I said, well, I'll hold off and see what happens. Caitlin, that was a mistake. So I'm not going to, I'm going to make every effort to do that kind of thing. You know, and just, you know, cut to the chase, cut to the chase. And, you know, no one way or the other, whether it's worth it. Just not do a buck dance if I can help it. it just, you know, if it looks like that, just walk away. And, you know, meet other people. So, um, anyway, I don't know. I'm just sort of having a rebirth of sorts here in recent months, especially in the last couple, you know, the last couple of weeks. So I guess if you notice, I'm kind of, <laughs> kind of weird, acting weird in a way that you may not have. <laughs> known me to act before in the past. That's why I'm just sort of, you know why I'm just sort of unloading a lot of weight, repression, and just sort of rolling with it. Just, I don't know, opening, 
you know, or leaving the door open, trying, trying to be more confident, less scared to take risks, so to speak. That kind of thing. No, I'm not going over the deep end. I hope I'm not anyway. Pretty sure. I am conscious of the possibility or potential that I could. So I'm always a little paranoid, purposeful, and checking myself. So just know that much. But that, you know, this is kind of interesting because, you know, I was really sort of feel like, uh, you know, just feel sort of different in a way, in the sense that, you know, I'm not feeling so, so powerless, or so at the whim of the things, or, you know, and I'm not so worried like I used to be. I mean, I do, and I don't. I'm just trying to be, I don't know, confident, I guess. Less self-conscious. If stuff does blow up, or I do something stupid, or whatever, I'm, I'm trying not to let that be too much weight or worry too much about it. So that kind of thing. Anyway, I won't shut the fuck up. I don't want to send you another movie. Your DC is all deserted now because of the holiday. I think they came out. They was the third the last time I was here a couple days ago. So they let everybody out of here uh, sometime late last week. And we'll probably be coming out until the middle of next week. And then we got Christmas and I think they, uh, as I recall when I was here, you know, come, you know, you, you, know, you come here for like a week or two and then after Thanksgiving and then it's like <laughs> once again everybody goes out of the uh, you know, until January. And so it's going to be deserted for a while. For the most part. So which I kind of like my life. Because it gives you a little time to reflect and not be too distracted. And my goal here lately is to sometimes start doing some time management. Uh, try to keep myself. Anyway, that's a short snippet for you. Uh, I hope you're doing okay. Uh, I hope we can uh, get in touch sometime soon. My sister's going to be here uh, two days next week. I think early, like Monday, Tuesday. Between Monday and Wednesday. Then she'll be out of the picture. She's going back to Costa Rica. So, uh, she won't be around uh, after that. So, I'll be back somewhere. And the holidays probably be winding down pretty quickly. So, anyway, that's the deal. So, good night.